Hello and welcome back to How to Connect with Humans. This is Series 4, Episode 5. Hello, Wayne. How are you? Hello, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm very good. Good. I'm more than good. Good. Because we're going to find the magic in relationships. So we're going to find the way of being guided through the magic in relationships. And... Um, so something we don't know anything about and we, we may be very useful for when we switch off that light and uh, and the real you and me start. <laughs> but we have a, a lovely, lovely guest speaker. We really learn to love her very quickly and, uh, and, and quite in a short period of time. Um, so we have Susan Marmot here tonight, and uh, she's going to talk about um, being guided by the magic in relationships. Uh, so hello, Susan, it's such a pleasure to have you here. And um, so we'll let you sort of, um, if you want to, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, what you've done and what you do. Um, so thank you so much. For being well, here. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you both for inviting me. And um, it's a lovely, warm place to um, to be tonight. It's really nice. Normally when I'm speaking, I'm all like, you know, a bit anxious, but it's such a, a, a we had a quite a laugh before we even started. So I'm sort of I'm feeling more settled. So it's lovely. And thank you everyone who's come tonight as well. Um, so just a little bit of background. Um, I, I came across this understanding in 2013. Um, I trained at the One Thought Institute and then I went and worked with um, Aaron and Mara at the time um, and then Aaron and Leela. So I worked for One Thought for a while and um, I also uh, have um, worked uh, for Beyond Recovery, working in the prison system for five years. And I also work with the lovely Caroline and Lily Hitt, who are here tonight. And we, we were, um, we, uh, Caroline's um, social enterprise is called Slice of Happiness. And we work with people affected by homelessness and people with mental health issues. And, um, the lovely Lily and also Lou, who I forgot to invite tonight. Um, we are setting up our own social enterprise to work with people coming out of the care system, which is called the Big Simple. And um, we'll, be, we'll be launching that soon. So that's just a little bit about me. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned that I do, which is very relevant to tonight is that um, I co-facilitate uh, co on, a, on a training called Relationship Ready, which is run by Leela Turner. And I've been doing that for about five years. And what that's about is it's to help people who, um, who are looking for a partner, but kind of have difficulty dating or they find it awkward or uncomfortable. Um, so uh it's a it's a it's a great course that kind of prepares people to get relationship ready so um so that that's maybe because i've because we've worked already with a lot of people and um that kind of i, I want to, i'm going i'm going to use the word qualify but it doesn't feel quite right so it qualifies me to maybe talk a little bit about this but the main thing that does, I think, is my own personal journey with, with dating, with love, um, because it it was it was an area for me that, um, well, ever since I've been a, in, a, a, um, you know, old enough to kiss a boy, um, has been quite difficult and problematic, and. Um, um, not always. I, I, I've, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm 56 now, and I'm sort of probably kissed my first boy when I was 13. And it, I think it was underwater in a swimming pool. Like we jumped in, went under the water, and kissed, and held our breath. Um, and um, 
Um, that's all I can remember about that. <laughs> but um, um, yes, but it's been a, God, it's been such a long and complicated and often difficult journey between now until the time where I got to the age of 50 and then um, I had a big turnaround and things became really, really different. And um, I just, you know, I, I, it, I started to kind of glide through relationship. And so that, that is what makes me um, kind of keen to kind of share what, 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 what helped me or what happened because it is literally just the most impossible contrast between how it looked before and how it looks now. Um, so, um, yeah, I just feel like it's, you know, I just want to kind of talk about that and see if anything helps anybody who might be struggling. Um, um, with with the many different things that I that I did struggle with, so um, so I was you know I have been reflecting all day uh, about this talk and kind of thinking what what do I want to share because um, I do like to kind of come at it fresh each time and see what feels kind of relevant and one of the things that I was was remembering was. Um, what, how relationships, what I thought about them back then, like when I was younger, and I'm not talking 13 anymore, but um, in, in my, you know, late teens, 20s, 30s, um, possibly even 40s, I, um, I thought relationships were a really serious business. And um, you know, it was something that I really, really wanted. My, I really, really desired to meet somebody who I felt really compatible and easy and enjoyed the company and, you know, felt that I loved and they loved me. But I did think that relationship was something that you took very seriously and it was serious. Um, and by that, I suppose I mean that um, I assumed that it was it was always going to be like very hard work in relationship um, because that's how that's how it felt for me. And I kind of looked around at other people, and it did kind of look like hard work most of the time for most of the people that I saw. Um, and I just want to say, if anybody wants to interrupt me or ask a question or, or anything, you're welcome to do it. Um, so, yeah, so I felt like relationship was a serious business and it had to be taken seriously. And if I was in one, um, I felt like that, that almost like you had to be, you had to have big talks with each other, that that was part of being in relationship. I also thought that about friendships. It's like, I used to think that um, I had, I have a, a cousin of mine um, who's a psychotherapist and the way that we always interacted together was to have these very deep and meaningful conversations where basically we would share the shit in each other's lives, <laughs> you know, like the heavy stuff, the, you know, the things that were going wrong. And that is how we related to each other. And I felt like that, although it didn't feel that great when I came off the call, I felt like that is how you relate to people. I thought, you, you know, you shared your, your painful stuff. So I kind of had that idea about relationship as well. That is a way you kind of share your painful stuff. You bring up all the time what's not working or what's not going right. And that is what, what my idea was. Um, and it didn't mean I was heavy all the time. And I certainly, at times, I was, I was kind of lighthearted and fun. Otherwise, I don't think I'd have been able to um, pull anyone, really. Um, I, I, you know... I, I doubt they would have been attracted 
unless they thought there was something um, a bit more fun than was actually on offer here. And so, um, so yeah, so that, that was one of the things that I thought about relationship. Another thing that I, I kind of also thought about relationship was that you, you get into a relationship and then you sort of scan around getting to know this person and you kind of work out what it is that you think they're looking for. Like, what is it that, what is it that I need to turn into to be, to be, continue to be attractive to this person? So like, how do I adapt myself to be um, what they're looking for? So in that scenario, I kind of would have to guess what it might be that I thought they were, um, you know, and they would be different for a different partner. Like maybe I thought one would like me to be a bit more lighthearted. One would like me to be more serious. One would like me to be more intellectual. One would like me to be more sexy. And then I would try and adapt myself to fit the, to fit the bill. And, um, and then I would feel like, um, which is a complaint that a lot of people make in relationship. Like you feel like you lose yourself, you lose yourself in a relationship. You feel like, oh, I, I don't know who I am anymore. Or I feel like I've kind of lost myself. And I know a lot of people say that. And it was something that I used to feel after a certain amount of time. And then, of course, I would actually blame the person or the relationship for my feeling that I'd lost myself. Um, because that's how it looked to me. It looked like the relationship was making me um, kind of not be me. And um, so that's something that happened to me kind of continuously over and over. And, um, um, and, you know, one of those kind of reasons behind that, although I know it's not an unusual thing to do, is because, you know, I was running my own ideas about what was what was wrong with me or not OK with me. And I didn't want those that person to really find out that underneath was this sort of insecurity that I was um, that I was inadequate and, and unlovable. That was um, one of the things that both those things I was running. So that's what, how I would talk to myself. So then of course, because I talked to myself like that, I felt like that, and then I wanted to cover it up. So I would try and be um, whatever I thought was the most attractive thing. And this really does sound like hard work, I know. And it wasn't sort of as conscious as this. It just kind of, that's, how I thought you did relationship and that's what I did but it was very very um tiring and um yeah you, you relate to that Heidi um yeah so um yeah it was tiring it was tiring and I felt like um I remember really feeling like I needed breaks like you know when you're when you're really comfortable around people or around around someone you don't need to have breaks from them because you're just being you but because I was always trying to kind of be a, a version of me it was actually really tiring so I sort of felt like I needed a night off or you know some time to recover <laughs> by myself because I was so tired um so um yeah, so yeah, so there would be this sense of losing myself and then I would blame blame him or blame the relationship. Um, another thing that I would I would do was um, I would have a lot of expectations that um, I wanted to be um, met. But um, I didn't want to seem needy or grabby. So I would keep them in my head but I really wanted them, but I wouldn't tell the person. So they would have to work out what it is was in my head that they needed to do to fulfill these needs. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, I, I wouldn't say it, um, but they, 
but I would have these expectations like, oh, I'd give you an example, like sort of like, oh, my birthday's coming up. I really want it to be a, a nice present because I want it to show that they're really into me. Um, and what, what, well, you know, what would that be? Could be like, you know, a, pl a plant to some people, some flowers, could be a piece of jewelry, could be a box of chocolate. I mean, who knows what that is, right? If you're not verbalizing what it is that this present needs to be in order to make you feel okay about it. But um, so that was, that, was, that was not easy for them because I'd have so much expectation on it and so much meaning about what this present would mean to me um, and what it would mean about the relationship. So there were a lot of sort of times like that where I, I was just begging them to be a mind reader. And I don't just mean about buying me a present, but any kind of needs that I had. I didn't feel comfortable enough to share any of the needs, but I really, really wanted them met. And I really, really wanted that person to get me. And by getting me, I meant they needed to be able to read my mind. And um, so I'd set up these expectations and then I would um, more often than not be disappointed. And my disappointment would be in them or in the relationship um, because that's how, it, that's how it looked to me. So, um, yeah, so a lot of stuff was kind of kept in but every now and again, it would, it would become too much. And I would feel like, oh, you know, I need to talk. We need to talk. No, I need to talk. <laughs> we need to talk. So I burst out with, we need to talk. And then I would like, um, feel like I needed them to understand what wasn't, what was not going well for me. And I was when we when I say we needed to talk, what it really meant was um, I need to share with you my insecurity and you need to make me feel better. Um, but that was all I'm said. <laughs> so it would go, we need to talk and I'd talk about something or other. And, um, you know, from a really kind of quite low feeling place and I would often not get what I was looking for, which was to feel better about myself. So those kind of conversations really didn't go well because I was looking for something very specific. Um, and I, because of the way I was kind of asking, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, it wasn't their first response to kind of be really loving and, and kind back um, and so I'd end up feeling worse after those we need to talk conversations um, so yeah so there was a lot of kind of needing wanting reassurance and um, and not really being myself and um, and wishing wishing beyond wishing that my partner was a mind reader and um and you know that makes it sound like it was all the balls were in my court and I was kind of and they were like perfect boyfriends and I was not a perfect girlfriend and many of the guys I went out with I would say were were far from that um but I'm just showing you kind of what my perspective was back then. And I think it wouldn't have mattered if they were all Prince Charming because of the way I was coming at it. I wouldn't have really been able to enjoy it or have a really good time with them. So um, that's kind of, that's kind of the way it looked to me. Um, and so, you know, I think everybody's familiar with the principles here and um, I'm guessing that, but, um, you know, I, I couldn't really have had a more outside in way of looking at love than I did. Um, and, you know, if people said to me, you know, things like, oh, you know, you need to learn to love yourself, um, then I I'd just be annoyed because I didn't know how to love myself and it was like do I really need another job 
Like, that's my job too. I like, I didn't want to hear that was my job. I wanted it to be whoever I was with's job, right? Otherwise, what's the point of having a partner if they're not going to do that thing where they make you feel good about yourself? It was just the way I felt about it. So, um, yeah, so I had a very, very outside in way of looking at looking at love and um, it was pretty tiring. So, what, so my relationship kind of history went, um, um, you know, in, in, I would say that in, in, in all of my relationships, I was, um, I'm going to say a minimum of 70% 70, 70 of the time in my own head. Um, and when I wasn't in my own head, um, I was in my own head thinking about what was in their head. So I was always wondering, you know, if they were a little bit off with me or, 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 you know, ridiculous things. It's sort of a bit embarrassing. But, you know, like I, I would assume that meant something about the relationship. I'd assume it meant something about me. I'd assume it meant something about the way they felt about me. And um, I, yeah, so I, I always was on the lookout for signals or signs or, you know, but um, I, you know, so if they were off with me, I'd start getting into my head thinking, oh, they obviously want to break up or, you know, something like that. So, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, it's some lovely messages here. Um, yes. Don't worry, Paul, nobody's a great mind reader. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, um, so, um, yeah, and then, yeah, so my relationships kind of went on and I had um, ones for varying lengths of time, usually for quite, quite long lengths of time, considering the level of suffering that was going on that I've explained. And um, I was married yeah, eventually for 13 years. Um, I got married when I was 25 and I was married for 13 years and I, I wasn't happily married. Um, and um, but it took me a very, very long time to leave because I had a lot of thinking about leaving and that I was gonna destroy everybody, including my children. That's how it felt uh, because of the way I was using my mind. And, you know, divorce, um, if anyone's been through it, it's 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 a difficult and painful uh, experience, and um, and very very scary from that kind of frame of mind. Um, yeah. So um, so after after I I came I after after my divorce. Um, I started dating again and I kind of went back to where I was again, same thing of having that insecurity and wanting someone to kind of make me feel better. And I didn't really have a, a lighter kind of way of showing up, not at that point anyway. And um, there were often times and especially sort of near the time where I was reaching 50 where it felt like um, it was very hopeless and that it may not happen for me ever that maybe you know I used to tell myself all sorts of things like maybe I'm too old or no one will find me attractive or um, you know I it, at some points it actually looked very very hopeless and I had no idea that that was something to do with the way I was using my mind and of course from that level of thinking it was always going to look hopeless from there because that's you know what happens at that level of thinking and then at other times I'd feel like more hopeful and I didn't really understand that why would that happen like wasn't it just hopeless yesterday um and I had no idea that that was saying something about the way I was using my mind, not about my life. So there were all these sort of things going on, but I didn't, I didn't have any understanding of them. So, um, um, so yeah, so 
so what happened next? <laughs> so, um, got, um, so, what, well, when I came across the principles, um, I was still, I was in a, I was in a relationship which, um, I had been in for, um, a few years at the time, about three years, maybe three, four years. And, um, the whole time I'd been in my, that relationship, I, I was doing another one of my tricks, a different one, but, um, I was doing the one where, um, I have one foot in the relationship and one foot out of the relationship. <laughs> and, um, I kind of, you know, oscillated between being in and being out, being in, being out. And that would be like, you know, over one day, let alone, you know, every other day or whatever. I felt like, you know, when I was in, it was very much from a kind of heady way of thinking, maybe you'll never meet anybody else. He's a good man. He's a decent man. You know, if you're not with him, you're going to be alone on a bench and feeding the birds and um, you know I got the whole visuals and um, I wanted to be alone on the bench holding hands with somebody and I didn't mind feeding the birds but I really did want to be holding somebody's hand <laughs> and um, so um, yeah so um, yeah, so in that relationship, I was I was really trying to work it out. I really wasn't sure whether he was or he wasn't the right person. He was a very nice person, but he didn't feel right for me. And in quieter moments, I'd get that really, really clearly, that message. But then I would completely kind of override it with my intellect of saying, you know, those things like, you know, maybe you'll never meet anyone else. He's a decent person, all this sort of thing. So I was always oscillating and I was just, it made it quite hard to enjoy it because I was always thinking about it. And, um, um, but every now and again, I would fall out my thinking and actually have a really nice time. And then it would be confusing because I'd be like, how come I can have a really nice time? But then where does it go? Where's that gone? It's like, what happened there? But anyway, so, um, and then I started learning about the principles. And I remember uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the training that I did, the, 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 the um, I think it was called the foundations training at that point, the one for, um, I, practitioner training, I think. Anyway, I, I had Aaron as my supervisor towards the end. And I, I, <laughs> and I would just be boring Aaron every week with the, well, should I stay or should I go? And what do we think? And what do you think? And, and um, I'd be like, and Aaron, I think Aaron said something like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're talking about, I've been thinking about this for four years. <laughs> what do you mean it doesn't matter? And um, so it was like, um, but I think I sort of understood that you just make a decision and then you've made a decision. And so my decision was I'm out. So um, I, I ended that relationship and, um, and that was that. And there was some relief from that because, you know, then I wasn't in indecision, which is tiring. <laughs> um, but um, there was also insecurity that arose with that, like the thing about what I was saying was, you know, I, I remember thinking that I maybe needed to just go and work in an orphanage in a really far away country because probably my love life was over now and there wasn't going to be anything else um so that makes Lily laugh okay so um and then about um a year year or so after that um I, I, you know, and I had seen something about this prin these principles, something had really, really changed in my life. Like when I saw what I saw 
um, I, my, my big insight was um, that, um, and it's funny when you see my big insight was, and then you can't remember what it was, but my big insight was that um, I, I was walking on the heath and I was with my dog and I was started to think about an ex-boyfriend. Now this ex-boyfriend, I haven't got into detail about him, but this is the one that used to walk me around the heath for about two hours every day and tell me all the things that were wrong with me. So I'd come back from the walk and I'd be crying my eyes out because I really, really liked him. And um, there were all these things wrong with me, right? There were all these things wrong. And, um, and but I thought that was, um, I kind of took it like coaching, like it was good for me. <laughs> um, and so it was very painful, very difficult, but, um, so anyway, I was thinking about that that bloke and I hadn't been with him for, I don't know, about 10 years at that point, but it, I was thinking about him and I remembering how he was with me and how unkind. And I started to cry. And I suddenly saw that, oh my God, it's not, Maybe I won't name him. So and so doing that to me. It's my thinking. And I saw that in action in that moment. I just suddenly saw where it was really coming from. And it was like I was on the heath, I was on my own with the dog. And I was, it was almost like I just kind of like was turning around, like to try and tell somebody that I could see what I could see. It was like unbelievable to me. And um, when I had that insight, I kept getting more and more insights like that. Like when I was on my way to work and I was moaning about my boss in, that, in my head, I realized, oh, hang on a minute. It's not her. I haven't even said good morning to her yet. I haven't even got there yet. It's me, right? And so I started seeing that all over the place. So like literally, I went from being a sort of 97% of the time overthinker of any day to about 70% fell away. So I had a really juicy insight and a lot of my thinking fell away. But when it came to the area of relationship, it was still there. I still had a ton of thinking. It was really sticky. It was an area where I thought this is hard. This is difficult. I need to work harder. I just need to work harder. That's like, that's what I do. That's what everybody does, isn't it? When something's difficult, we think we've just got to do better or try harder. It's like, we're not, we're not, you know, we blame ourselves. And um, so I was still in that kind of mode. But then um, I started doing a bit of internet dating and um, I, I wrote to uh, three people who looked kind of nice to me. And um, um, one of them didn't write back. One of them, um, um, just reminds me of something I want to say. Um, one of them um, I went on a date with, and one of them wrote back and said, um, I'm really sorry, I'm, but I'm dating somebody else, um, so I'm going to leave it for now. Um, but the, uh, so I went on a couple of dates with the one who, um, <laughs> was available um but it didn't pan out but um about four months after one of the guys who I'd written to had never written who who hadn't answered then wrote back to me and um it's not what you call speed dating is it um so um so and he said um you know um I'm I'm back I'm available <laughs> um would you like to meet up and I said yeah, sure. Yeah, it'd be nice. I was away in America at the time, but I said, when I get back. So we met up when I got back and, um, and he was really nice. <laughs> and, um, and I just found myself coming at it in a different way. And 
I, I, it was like there was two of me in a way. It was like there was this person who just kept knowing what was what to do or what not to do. It was like I suddenly become that person from the person who really didn't know anything about anything. I suddenly like knew what to do and what not to do. And it was it was like I I we went out and we had a really nice time. We had a laugh and we had fun and and I I didn't jump anywhere. I I I didn't kind of analyze him on the day. I wasn't thinking could I be with a man like this? Could I be with him in the future? Is this going to work out? I just enjoyed him. Just enjoyed him and I enjoyed myself. And at the end of the evening, um, look, I, I tell you something quite weird. We went outside and the sky lit up with fork lightning. And okay, I've never seen fork lightning before. And that was weird. <laughs> it was a moment, right? But we said, oh, you know, he said to me, oh, do you want to do, do this again tomorrow? And I was like, yeah, why not? I mean, why not, right? I have had a really nice evening. So we went and did it again the next day and we had a really nice time. And we said, and he said, do you want to do it again the next day? And I said, yeah, sure. And it was very much, I found myself, instead of, being in my head or being in the future, which is where I always was on dates. Like, could I really be with this man? Will I, you know, kind of in my head interviewing him for a position. I just enjoyed it. I just, I just got to know him. And I, I didn't know whether he was the one. It was not like, okay, the fault lightning probably was a clear <laughs> reflection. But um, I didn't know that. And um, so I just got to know him and enjoy him. And I did have wonderings. Every now and again, I think it's, you know, I'm not sure. Is he a bit there's a real? And I'd be like, well, let's wait and see. There wasn't anything to do about that. It was just like, let's just wait and see. Let's just get to know him. And I, I would say that. I, it was so different to the way I'd always been. It was like I was, I was just in the moment and knew what to do and knew what not to do. So if I felt myself getting kind of intense or tight, I would listen to that and I'd be like, just kind of take take a chill pill. It's like just kind of step away from that intensity and just come back to come back to the now and I I never you know having done that all that time making meaning out of things I never made meaning out of anything that was that you know if I felt a bit tight or I felt a bit uh insecure it didn't have any place in the relationship it didn't have any uh foothold there there was nothing to discuss in the relationship because I was having a little bit of insecurity. Um, and as a result, um, we know we've, we've been together five and a half years and I, I did once say we need to talk, but it was something like, I don't know what we should have for dinner tonight. I mean, I needed to talk about it because I'm really quite obsessed with food. But we've never had we need to talk. It's not, um, I mean, it's, it's just, it's a day-to-day -day thing. It's like we enjoy today. I remember having this feeling like you just enjoy today and tomorrow takes care of itself. That was the first time that had ever happened to me. It was like I always thought I have to take care of everything. I have to be on the lookout for the potential problems, for what's going to happen for some sort of timeline. And it was like, no, no, it was like, it just came to me that none of that was on me. And all I needed to do was show up and be in the moment. And what happened over and over again was we had this very light, fun connection and enjoyed each other. And 
it meant that I never worried about whether we should get married or be together forever or whatever. It's like, why wouldn't we want to be together tomorrow? Like, this is nice. Why wouldn't we want to be together tomorrow? It was that way around. It was, it wasn't, the only thing that was kind of on me was just to, and not even that. It's like, I'm sometimes in my head. It doesn't even matter. But I, I don't make, I don't, I don't make any meaning out of it. I don't make any meaning and I don't drag that into the relationship. So if I'm a bit um, in my head, I, I'm not, you know, I'm, I can be an amazing listener, but I can also be a ridiculous listener, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like it's as long, at least I know when I'm listening and when I'm not listening, which is something I never kind of knew before, but it, it's like, I just, realized that that when I wasn't in my head all of these kind of things that I'd always longed for like feeling close to someone having fun with someone um, um, being ridiculously silly with someone um, feeling loved being loving all those things just showed up when I wasn't trying and for some amazing reason i finally got this area of my life where i trusted that mind knew what to do and i was really sensitive to mind in this area it's like i would never let my head take charge of this area on on purpose now it's like no way no way um and I can, I, you know, sometimes I can feel myself getting a bit controlling or tight or, you know, wanting to be right. And, but it doesn't feel nice. It doesn't feel nice. I'm like, what do I want to do? Do I want to be right and, you know, be in that kind of feeling all evening? Or do I just want to, like, not go after something? It's like all the kind of gifts and the joys are when you kind of let go and you don't try and control it. So, I, I amazingly just showed up to this relationship very, very differently. And, you know, there's lots of times where I'm in the relationship. There's no day, there's no day that doesn't go past where I can see how I would have behaved, how I would have dealt with something compared to how I do deal with it. Um, and, um, and, you know, when you show up as just as you without any without trying to be anything else you get a, a very you become more you become more lovable and it's amazing like the more you you are the more acceptance you get and it's just sort of so back to front to how i used to think that i had to be something to get that acceptance and now, and, and I, 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 don't, I don't feel any loss of myself. I feel, I feel found and, um, um, and I'm very, very grateful for what I know and for what I see and for what it makes sense for me to follow or go towards or not go towards because I get guided every single day, all the time. And it's more from this kind of feeling. I feel kind of tight and contracted when, my head's getting in the way and when I kind of come out of that again then mind shows me what to do next and it's like a um yeah I, I don't want to say more than that um yeah but I just wanted what I, what I, what I remembered earlier that I wanted to say was about taking things personally and um that I um I used to take everything very personally and it, it it's like it just it's so it's amazing how I mean that there's just there's there's nothing it's there's so little that you know it's like if if my husband's not listening to me or something because you know because he's distracted it's like 
that I would have made meaning out of in the relationship. I'd have thought it meant he wasn't into me or wasn't into the relationship. And now if I see he's distracted, he's distracted. That's it. He's distracted, whatever. And the big deal is nothing. I'll talk to him when he's not distracted. It's like, it's just very simple and clear. And, um, but like I say, I get, I, it's not like, there, there are lots of things, little things that happen, but I just know how I would have dealt with it in the old days. And I know what makes sense to me now. And I have a lot of gratitude for that. Anyway, I've literally talked the longest I've ever, 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 ever talked. Well, pro I think, and that's like long, long time. That is beautiful. <laughs> and and I tell you, Sister Waters, what um, I think what it comes across is um, how relatable it is. Like you could be talking honestly about my relationships, life, like that could have been me. And I had Wayne here just like, well, let's just look at each other. It was like, yeah, it's like me too, you know. It's, uh, we don't realize how similar our experiences are. And yet we feel so lonely and we think we are the only ones going through that. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in, the, in the 50s club, you know, which is- oh, a, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 52. Surprise. So uh, for people that don't know what a magazine used to be, so it was, used to be like this, you know, thing that you used to buy every week. And, um, you know, and if, if you're a woman also, because I don't know you guys what you, you used to do or, you know, how it works, but I can, I can tell from Mars that, you know, you would start a relationship or you would be looking for the relationship. You will sort of peel out your collections of, uh, you know, Cosmos Magazine, the <laughs> questionnaires, and your 10 steps on how to get the right guy or whatever. And, and you will start sort of, that, that was, you meet somebody and you were like, well, now my future, my security, my future family, my happiness, my feeling of being seen, taken care of, loved all depends on you and we're sort of going to start this contract and at least that's what I feel it was sort of how I used to approach things and then I wasn't available it's like I wasn't available to that person and I didn't make that person available to me because I would stop seeing who I had in front of me um thinking that that's this was the way to go and you know because obviously a relationship is something serious as you were saying at the beginning you know um and you know you could have relationships that were like just maybe for fun but you know since since you kissed your your guy under the water pretty much i was kissing my first boyfriend and and i wanted him to be my husband like future husband i i never pretty much dated anybody but, um I didn't come with that agenda. And, um, <laughs> um, and funny enough, when I was, when, when I came around the principles, after a bit, I realized that I was very unhappy in my marriage. And it wasn't, you know, as I said, very similar to what you were saying. Mm -hmm. I, I had become what I thought he wanted. I was trying to keep coping and such a hard job of, obviously I wasn't doing it well because he wasn't happy. Um, but my, all that building up around me, all that mask and all that costume to be hopefully lovable was obviously not being enough. And then he was seeing how unlovable I was. That's what I thought. And, and again, it was like, should I rather stay in this relationship that at least we're married and hopefully holds onto something? Or <laughs> would I be, uh, you know, in, in, in the bench in front of Susan, you know, feeding the birds and, uh, 
thinking how lonely we feel and um so but it became it became obvious at some point that that wasn't working and what i never thought i would say came out of my lips and was like you know i think this is a working way we need to separate now what happened because if not it looks like we you know i i, I wouldn't want to say that I came to the understanding and suddenly I read or they taught me the secret of how to, you know, change that. It was, it was something that erased in me, sort of happened to bubble up in me. All my relationships either started getting better or what didn't make sense started making no sense. That's what I heard from what you were saying. Um, but just about before that moment Wayne appeared in my life and I saw him with complete different eyes I think we saw each other with complete different eyes than I had I didn't know what he was going to be in my life I didn't know that's what you were saying like I I don't know who's going to be there tomorrow I didn't know all I knew was like this feeling of like deep love and connection. I just wanted to be in his life. I wanted to, I didn't know what. And the second day after I met you, you asked me, why would you not separate if you feel that it's not working? And can I just say at this yeah. point I didn't even I was I didn't even know the principles in this moment so for me to kind of come up with that I was just like it, it just it just for me it just kind of looked like well if you're not happy why are you there and I said well because I can't do it on my own I can't I'm, I'm alone I have nobody, I have no family, I have nobody. I'm, you know, my, my family's in Argentina. I'm, I won't be able to afford it and I can't do it on my own. And Wayne said, I'll be here for you. I didn't know him. And for the first time, it wasn't going from one branch so, oh, okay, I'll let go of that branch and I will hold on to this one because now Wayne will take care of my well being and the things I need. It was, I heard something much deeper. Like, okay, if you want to, just, just feel free that I'm here. It was like an absolute certainty that you can do this. You can do this. It may look like us, you need a teddy bear to hold on to. Oh, that's your teddy bear. Okay. But it was that certainty that now, and I think during these eight years, every day we go into, we could go into old habits and then we learn about new things and we hear each other. Yeah. And um, so I think that's that's why it's what you said and what you said during that time so beautifully. It's just that it's so freeing. I love what you said when you said about the relationship being hard work, because I. I've always believed before I met Carolina was like, oh, every relationship's hard work. Now there's not, I'm not gonna deny it and say there's days where, you know, the relationship doesn't feel like it's hard work or anything like that, because there are days where I'm just like, I'm just, I can't, I, I, I just, I need me, I need me time. But at the same time, this is probably the first relationship I've ever been in. And I'm not just talking about with a partner, I'm talking about with my own family, with any relationship. 
the majority of the time, I can just be me and let go. Mm. And it, it's so, it's so freeing and so releasing to have that. You know, as you say, there's there's days where Carolina will try and talk to me and I'll just be distracted. Or yeah. I'll, I'll have something on my mind and I'll just, you know, be in a mood or whatever. And it's not to take it personally. Yeah. Such a relief. Yeah. And, and you know, um, the other thing that was complete you know i said like when i was younger everything 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 felt outside into me in regard to relationship about my feelings and feeling loved and feeling lovable and all of that and it was just such a surprise to me um when i saw in action that all you know uh, my husband's called Jeremy all my loving feeling for Jeremy was coming from within me it was like it was such a surprise when I saw it in action like I I was in a good feeling and because I was in a good feeling I just felt filled with love for him my good feeling my 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 good feeling I get filled with love for him and I up until that I guess I always thought that you you felt love because of somebody else or because of what they're doing or because of how they're being I just I didn't see that I could like get filled with love whenever I wanted and it was just up to me like I can have a I can get a beautiful good feeling about anybody at any time it's up to me I just get filled with it it's my feeling um and seeing that was like amazing amazing and such a difference to that thing where I said when like when I felt like I was being given another job when they said you know if you want if you've got to learn to love yourself it's like such a different kind of that felt like a job and this is like oh my god I can get filled with this this amazing loving feeling at any point we get it in group all the time don't we you know when you just get filled with filled with love and it's it's just such a wonderful wonderful gift that is available to all of us but we just get keep getting in the way of that don't we we get I mean, if we don't know we get in the way because we're looking for it or we're searching for it or yeah we're looking else out, outside for it Ah, oh, there's a lot of messages here. Shall we, shall a we... lot about you being very, very young. <laughs> <laughs> but you are ridiculously looking young. <laughs> well, uh, it helps to have a, a younger model. But <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're going to upgrade soon. <laughs> no, I won't. But it, it, re it really, I mean, I, I, I will really like people to uh, be able to either unmute themselves and share something or ask questions uh, uh, or you can put your virtual hand. Um, I love uh, Karina, I hope this is uh, it's okay for me to share it, but she, said that, um, she often feels guided to um, through principal staff and uh, she click at the button to this Zoom meeting, totally impulsive balance and harmonic relationships and being authentic is so important for a really good life and soul love that is sound that sounds like Susan Carolina and Wayne uh, have found love this and I love 3p and the whole inside out understanding lots of love and we have, we have tons of really lovely messages um, so uh, please please unmute yourselves ask questions share something if you want to um, Can I say something? Yes, of course. Hey, Heidi. Hi. 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 So, uh, yeah, every, it's amazing the things you were saying, how uh, it sounded like it was me. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and I, but my last relationship and was with my husband and we have a son and he's now four. And 
everything like in the first for the first time in my life the relationship with my husband went really smoothly in the beginning um and it just seemed to be amazing how it just happened so smoothly like none of the other relationships were and you know both of us wanted a child and both of us wanted the same things and I'd never met anyone that wanted the same things as me before and what I used to do is I would adjust to meet what they wanted and uh and I would end up in all the wrong relationships because of it and you know I was getting on and thinking well I really want a child so anyway so I met David online and everything went really smoothly but uh as soon as as soon as I had my son our son I all you know I I just became I mean I wasn't even aware that I had anxiety before but I I'm very aware that I had lots of anxiety when my son was born about whether I could be the right this and the right that and the right mother I mean I just you know, if I was going to get anxious about anything, I got anxious about everything, about my job, about myself, about, you know, being, it was just horrendous. And, 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 I, and I basically lost it. But and my husband basically said, you're losing it. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm fine. And I shaved my hair off and, you know, carried on working and said, you know, I'm OK, you know, and all these things. But and I didn't really ever admit to him that I was losing it, really. But, and, and any time that he said to me that I was losing it, it just made me fight back. And, you know, I, I've, I, I've, I've been fighting for two years. I'm still fighting him. I mean, I've done everything. I've used my son in a custody battle. I, I've just done everything to fight him. And now, you know, I'm going to get upset. But now I realize that, you know, all of that was just because I couldn't, handle what was going on and what he was saying to me and you know the feelings that it was bringing up and you know I just didn't want to admit any of these things that I've just said and you know I just wanted to kind of just you know I don't know just uh roll over and say it's okay you know and and it is okay but the thing is um I have done so many things to avoid kind of I don't know I, I've just been resisting the the facts and um but I you know I came across the principles um in November uh of 2019 and we split in July and since I came across the principles you know I've had so many ups and downs about how I feel about everything you know myself my job uh, my son, my, my husband, and, um, and, and, you know, most of the time when he doesn't respond to me in the way I want, I then petition for divorce or raise a custody battle or, you know, do these dramatic things. And it's only now, like it's a year and a half later. Um, I mean, it will be two years in July. It's only now that I realize that, um, that I didn't have to do any of those things. And, you know, maybe if I hadn't have done any of those things, um, oh, I could have, my life would have, you know, with, with the situation would have been so much better, but thank God now I can see that I don't need to do, I'm not gonna do any more. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm totally kind of saying, look, you know, I, 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 I don't want any of this anymore. I want us to get on, you know, I, I'm not fighting anymore. And, you know, I think it's going to be okay, but, you know, and I even, and I even like want him back, but, you know, whether that's going to happen, I, I think I, I don't even uh, have an expect, well, I, I, I have a, I do have an expectation, but I cannot believe that I'd ever get him back after all of this. Um, you know, he's done some crazy things as well. Uh, you know, we've both been as bad as each other on many levels. Um, but, you know, it, part of me thinks, you know, on many levels, even though he had just as many issues as me, you know, he was the best one out of all of them. And, you know, it's just coming to terms with and dealing with, you know, how do I now you know, forgive myself for what's happened, forgive him. And, and I do forgive him. I forgive him. I totally forgive him. 
Um, but how do I forgive myself and move forwards um, without constantly beating myself up for doing what I've done? Like, I know that we, in the three Ps, you know, what I did then, I did then because I didn't know any better. But the thing is, today, uh, you know, I can't, it's hard to let go of this need uh, to want to kind of make it all better and, and correct it all and, and, and uh, you know, repent for the rest of my life for my sins, you know, which is not 3P. Uh, but, you know, how do I, I don't know, uh, I, I know that no one has the answer and, and, and it will all work itself out. Um, but, but just recently we had a conversation and, and I, and I basically, he picked up the phone and I didn't imagine he would pick up the phone. So when he picked up the phone, I couldn't even speak. I couldn't get my words out and I didn't know what I was going to say anyway, but I couldn't get my words out. But, you know, I started speaking and then he asked a few questions and then I responded to those questions and he said, oh, I can't really do this now because I'm at work. And I said, OK, I understand. That's fine. Uh, I was just responding to your question. And he said, uh, uh, I, I can't remember. But then the, the, finally it was like uh, I said, um, you know, he said, look, you know, we'll make some time, you know, have a good day. Uh, I hope you have a good day. And uh, and that was that. And, and I keep going over, you know, he was actually really nice to me on the phone. <laughs> He wasn't horrible to me, which he was like, and I was the horrible to him. Anyway, but the thing is, it's like, uh, what I would have done in the past is I would have contacted him again and, you know, I would have rang and rang and rang like some crazy nutter and, you know, he, you know, and, and maybe left some voicemails and, you know, blamed him for everything that I was feeling and that he wasn't giving me exactly what I wanted now. And, you know, I'm not going to do that, even though there are there were moments where, you know, I, I thought, oh, I'm just going to do that. But I haven't done that. And it's like, you know, whatever happens, you know, I have done something gracefully at last <laughs> because none of it's been graceful for the last two years. But, you know, finally I have. But, uh, you know, and I don't know when I hear your story and, you know, your story as well, you, you, Carolina and Wayne, you know, every time I see you, I just think you're just so adorable. And I just think, how did you get to be so adorable? <laughs> uh, you know, you're just so adorable and, you know, you, you've been through what I've been through. So, you know, it gives me hope that, you know, I can get there one day. And again, Susan with you, so I don't know, I, I don't know, really know what I'm saying anymore, but, um, you know, thank you for sharing what you shared, Susan, because it, it is giving me hope. Um, and yeah. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing what you shared. And, um, you know, um, I can't speak for everybody on the call, but, you know, listening to you, you know I'm saying but you're adorable you're adorable because you're so you know your openness and sharing what you shared and how you know you you've clearly been trying your best but making loads of mess in the past because that's what we do when we get in our get in our way like it just we make mess and then now it doesn't make sense to you anymore and that's just bloody brilliant I think the work the progress and what you're seeing now is just amazing. So, and that's, you know, when we, when, we, you know, we can, it sounds like, you know, you, you, you kind of were, were reactive in the past, but we all know what that's like. And it's, you know, whenever I get into that sort of state, I, I, I try not to make too much mess when I'm in it, but sometimes we do make a lot of mess when we're in it. And then, but then to have this grace where you've come out of that and you're looking back and you're thinking, you know, I can see that that's not how I want to be coming across or that's not how I want to be showing up. And it's like, all you, it's like when I was listening to you, all I think is that you're already being guided. You're already being shown what to do and not to do. It's like it's already showing up from the way you're speaking and the way you're explaining. So, 
you'll know you'll know because it's that thing of following what feels right you know when you're getting contracted because it doesn't feel good and you you can start to make a mess and you know when you're coming from a place where you're getting more filled with love love for your husband love for your son love from whatever and like you just need to come from that place and you see what will pan out you're not in you you don't have to make everything happen you just kind of show up in the way that you want to be showing up and maybe some days you won't and that's fine too but at least your general direction now is is coming from love and that's what i'm hearing and that's a really great place to be coming from and then let's see what magic happens after that Um, it just remind, reminded me of this um, when I when I hear seeds saying um, in the recordings like when I hear for me so like be thankful for what you have Carolina and I remember reading something on um, Facebook at some point that said Remember when you wish you had what you have today? And that for me, it's like, <gasps> oh. So say for example, if I wish like oh, for what you were sharing, Heidi, so nicely. If I wished we didn't have any fights with my ex, any more horrible feeling between us, and now we don't, oh my God, that is, that is already something so huge. Like you have a nice conversation on the phone and you're connecting again, that is huge. Because if not, I tend to keep thinking of what I wish would happen next instead of, um, savoring and being so grateful for what is happening now like that not not as a doing but like really like realizing what a huge difference that is what a huge difference i can hear in your life from where you were and what you were here now you know what susan is saying you're you're being guided there's nothing else to do just just you don't want to, you, you don't need to, you know, kneel on rice or <laughs> walk on fire. That's okay. That's, that's okay. You know, when you can, you'll forgive yourself and you just be guided. And, but what you managed to, to do today, that beautiful, lovable person you are that now has is doing so many lovable stuff loving stuff really um that's that's just so for me that's what i i will say that is my answer to that is my answer to yeah but you know what i mean i'm i'm not saying about but i mean today <laughs> I, I went to work today, I woke up and I just felt so angry and I drove in my car really fast and I got really annoyed with my car and I even got annoyed with my dog and I got annoyed with myself and I got to work and, uh, and, I, and I just admitted to people that I'm just feeling really miserable but the main reason I was feeling miserable is because in my head this dialogue going on is it's all about you know oh my god you shouldn't have phoned him oh my god what is he going to be thinking oh my god what's going to happen next oh my god what if i do do what i've done before you know and 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 it was driving me nuts but i managed to you know do good things at work today and you know if i had patients you know because i'm a nurse you know the patients i was dealing with was was you know i did good things and and what i what i found amazing is that you know the patient came in the room and everything went and you know normally I'm 
I can deal with my patients, but there's still loads of shit going on. And, 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 and it's driving me mad. And if a patient is coming up with stuff that I think, oh God, it's not that symptom again, you know, the noise will, will, will annoy me. And I might even like express that in my expression to the patient. And, you know, the mask hides a lot, thank God, in some ways. But, um, but the thing is today, like, I don't know what it was. I was feeling so bloody angry and I do get so angry with myself because of the noise, but I still managed to do a really good job with my patients. And, you know, sometimes it's not always like that and I can be in a better mood. So, you know, I, I, that, that is, that was really weird for me today. And, you know, even though, and, and anyone that asked me at work that I know really well, you know, people that I didn't know so well, that, oh, hi, hi, you know, in the corridor, but anyone that knows me well, how are you? Are you all right? It's like, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm really angry and I'm miserable. And I think I'm going to be miserable for the rest of my life, you know, really honest. And, you know, normally I just pretend that everything's okay. <laughs> and, you know, I did have some thinking that maybe people are thinking, oh my God, that Heidi, she's a bit nuts because she's so miserable. But, it wasn't, it wasn't a huge amount of thinking, you know, I think, I don't know, maybe it's okay to be honest, but you know, I, I, I like, you know, this hard work of trying to maintain this persona to everyone, you know, I would do it with people, not just relationships, everyone It's like working so hard to create this persona for the sake of who it wasn't for me, it was for everyone else. So everyone else can give me something but actually they're not giving me anything I need and it doesn't work. You can't control how other people behave towards you. Uh, so anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Claire has a question or, or a hand up. So Claire, okay. please do um, mute yourself. There you go. Hello. Yeah, hi. Um, I just wanted to say, Heidi, um, you just made me think today because I'm a nurse as well. And, um, you know, when you were saying that, um, you know, with your patients, you're sort of, you know, you forget about what's going on in your own life and you're sort of there and you're with them and you're, you know, you know, that's you being present, isn't it? And that's, um, you, you know, with your thought falling away at that point, you're there with them. Um, and I just think, you know, probably the other stuff is when you're, you're getting lost in it, all that surface noise and thought is, can come away when, you know, you, when you're not present sort of thing. So, you know, I just think just, be reassured that's always there sort of thing and I know oh god I'm totally with you because I'm I'm exactly the same you know we all have that we're all the same aren't we we're all the same but um yeah just made me think yeah I know and thank you and it, but but and it, but it's so sometimes it's so hard to remember to, to to remember that it's that it's there because, you know, I, all I remember, unfortunately, well, a lot of the time, I remember all the bad moments when I wasn't present and I'm sitting there thinking, this patient is driving me nuts. And, you know, you know, I just want him to, I just want this patient to leave the room because I can't even sort this patient out. And, and I'm giving myself a hard time because the patient presentation is too complicated for me to deal with, but I can, I can refer, it's fine. But because I can't deal with it, I'm really annoyed with myself and I'm almost irritated with the patient. And, and it's like, you know, if I go and leave the room, discuss it with a colleague, the, you know, my colleague will say, it's no problem, yeah. just refer. And it's like, oh, that's it that's it why, you know what why, people why was like, I so tense sense. myself yeah. yeah it's like you know because because it's this whole thing of like feeling like I you know I'm I'm not good enough because I can't mm. sort this out now I'm not perfect but it's like actually you know you can still help but you just need to refer yeah and and but today I don't know today it was almost like every patient that walked through the room was there 
to show me that actually I'm okay because it all worked. But I was still feeling shit. When they left the room, I was back in my shit. And then they come in and it, and it went. And, and it's like, sometimes I live in fear of going to work thinking, what if I actually lose it in front of a patient and I don't know, swear at them or I don't know, just get really angry because I've got so much anger inside of me. Uh, you know, I, I, I worry, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> it's I love fine. the way you keep coming back to that. Yeah. You don't have to do that, though. <laughs> don't have to. You don't have to do that, love, do you? What, spend all that time worrying about it? Yeah. No. I mean, you know, like, I've had moments since I've been understanding about the three Ps where I haven't had so much anxiety. But just lately, you know, this anger and this worry, and I am going through the perimenopause, uh, this anger and this worry is, is, is like, oh my God, I thought I'd done, I'd done, I, I really thought I, I had done with this, but it's back. But, and there are moments where I thought I've lost it all. All of this understanding, I've lost it all. I'm back to square one, but I haven't because I wouldn't be doing this if I had. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's fine. All yeah. is well. It'll pass totally. Yeah. <laughs> all as well beneath Thank all that you. noise there's all there's lots of there's everything good beneath all that noise and we just listen to the noise and it's fine and then we don't and then we get good again um if anyone feels drawn we've got a relationship ready uh, training coming up in march the 4th, 13th 14th or 14th 15th is a saturday and a sunday um which you can find um, on Facebook under Relationship Ready. Um, but can I just say that um, I really, really enjoyed tonight and I thank you so much for inviting me and it was really lovely to meet everybody and I hope I see you all again at some point. And um, thank you, Carol Caroline and Lily for coming along because I know you get to hear me a lot at other times of the week. So very kind of you to both show up. Thank you. And Heidi, all the best, but it's all going well. It's all going in a good direction overall. All the best, all the best to everybody. Listen, thank you so much. I think what you open up is something that we can truly do as yeah. you well know for like, whole weekend or you know several weeks because it it, it is it is powerful it's it's something everybody can relate and um and uh so maybe it is something we should do for a few more weeks but um anyway you've been super kind with your time and we're gonna put the the link so people can sign up for the for for your training um but we're not gonna this is not all we're gonna have of susan martin's during this series is it because i don't want to let her go but um <laughs> but next to nearly the end of the series we're gonna have uh susan we're gonna have liliana bellini which i think maybe she had to leave and i don't know if she's here yet still no, she's gone now. Oh, no, she's gone. No. Um, and uh, Louise Scott, because uh, you started something new that we heard yeah. in the Juliana Bellini's talk. And uh, you're going to come and talk about <laughs> Big Simple. Um, Thank so you. We look, we look forward to that. We look forward to that. <sighs> And that's about young people in the foster system, isn't it? That's that, right. We want to work with people coming out of the care system as so that's as what knows. come and talk about. And um so thank you everybody for being here so much. Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> Next week, um we are having uh Jatil Halmo and uh yeah. And Jatil is uh, having 
lots of beautiful stories to talk about and uh, you know had a very interesting life um, but we're gonna let it all for him to talk about yeah. and he's gonna talk about being present from the heart so if you're curious yeah. about that we'll be lovely to have you here next week so to everybody here thank you so much thank you, thank you. And uh, Susan, it's been a pleasure. Can't wait to have you here. So thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Take care.